So, it's been nearly a month since the Side Order DLC has released for Splatoon 3. This is the most significant DLC the game will see, with its own story mode, a ton of unique mechanics, features, and more. And a lot of people have been wondering, is Side Order worth it? Well, now that I've had a lot of time to play it and check everything out, I think I can answer this question, at least from my personal point of view. Now, I picked up Side Order on day one because I'm a massive Splatoon fan, if that wasn't obvious already, and I have to say I have absolutely loved the DLC from start to finish. That's not to say there aren't some flaws that I will point out within this video, however, overall, my general opinion is that it is fantastic and it is a worthy addition to Splatoon as a franchise. Definitely the biggest highlight of the DLC overall has to be its replayability, and I give big kudos for Nintendo for doing this. The DLC effectively could be played forever if you want to, but there are certain goals that you'll want to complete that kind of tie into this replayability. The more times you replay, the more rewards you'll end up getting effectively. And there will sort of come a limit to how many rewards you can end up getting. You'll basically have unlocked everything after a certain amount of runs through successfully, and then the game might feel a little bit stale. So whilst technically you can play it forever, there won't be new things for you to enjoy every single time. At least in the sense of getting rewards. Depending on your skill level though and how good you are at Splatoon, it could take you quite a lot of times to make it through and get all of those different rewards that you could possibly get, so you might find yourself playing this for quite a long time, compared to some other players who are really really good at Splatoon and might have completed this really quickly. I know of lots of people who had completed it fully within one week, and then other people who are still trying to complete it at this point despite playing since day one. I myself haven't unlocked everything you can yet, not even nearly, although that's more just due to having a lack of time to play. But I feel like that's kind of a benefit to someone like me as I'll get a lot more replayability out of this, especially due to the fact that I have failed quite a few times running through, so I need to try again, which means more replayability. Speaking of the rewards that you get for Side Order, there are some very good ones. Keep in mind there will be some spoilers. One of the main rewards that you'll get for completing the Spire of Order, the main part of the game each time, are these replica weapons. You'll basically have to run through the tower one full go with this weapon if you want to unlock it to use in multiplayer battles in the rest of the game. And I do think this is really great and it's sort of the main incentive for replaying. You want to replay again and again so you can unlock all of these different weapons so you can have them in your main Splatoon game. The replica weapons are no new thing to Splatoon, but to see so many of them like this is really great. Unfortunately, they do share the same kits as their base weapon, so there's nothing super unique about them aside from how they look. But to be honest with you, that's always how replicas have been in Splatoon, they're literally just the aesthetics. So if that is something you care about and you want to have a cool and fairly unique looking weapon that not every other player will have, then this is definitely a good reward for you to get, and it would be a good reason to get Side Order in my opinion, as this is one of the main rewards. However, the absolute biggest reward, and the one that makes this DLC the most worth it in my opinion, is unlocking Incopolis Square from Splatoon 2. Now that we've had things like special Splatfests in this game, it is definitely worth it to get the DLC so you can unlock this after completing it for the first time. This is a huge addition to the game, and it gives us all three hub worlds. Now, the original Incopolis was just unlocked by default when you purchase the DLC, but this one actually requires some work, which just makes it feel a little bit more satisfying, and it's kind of the culmination of the story that continued on from Splatoon 2 into Splatoon 3. Now, once again, this is mainly just for aesthetics. It is functional in a sense, of course, because, you know, you can wander around here and enjoy all the things here, but it is mostly an aesthetical thing, so if you're not really into that sort of thing, this reward might not interest you, like a lot of the rewards will. But given the fact you'll be able to see Pearl and Marina perform here in special Splatfest, probably get some special music, and just have an interesting new area to explore around to kind of break up the monotony of Splatoon, I definitely think that makes this reward worth it. Of course, that isn't the only reward. There are other things you can unlock too, like through the shop. Scyfter's Scythings will give you some really cool rewards like special banners, extra decorations for your lockers, stickers, and more, and I really like this part of the game. Once again, however, the stock here is limited, so eventually, you will have played through so many times you'll be able to afford everything, and then the shop just won't be that exciting to you from that point onwards. All you'll be able to do is really get this mystery box which will give you a random selection of things, just like you can get in the main story of the game, and also sometimes from the catalogue too. 
but it could take you some time to get all of the currency you need in order to buy everything. I know it's certainly taking me a long time, so that might be worth it to you, and I think this is definitely a great new mechanic in the game. It is really cool to have an exclusive shop that is only available in the DLC. I just think that also makes the DLC feel that much more worth it in my opinion. Although I do think it would have been cool if perhaps we could have seen this a little bit earlier, maybe if Side Order had released a bit sooner, and Nintendo could have updated it with some more things. Whereas unfortunately, it feels like Nintendo probably isn't going to update Side Order with any new content. Generally, that doesn't really happen with DLCs anyways, so I'm not too disappointed, but I can imagine the shop would have gotten a lot out of being updated like this. Overall, I would say Side Order DLC is definitely worth it, especially if you counter in all of the unlocks that you can get, like Inkopolis Square, the weapons, the special outfits, the banners, and so much more. But just from an enjoyment level, forgetting about all of the rewards, I would say there is a ton to be found within this DLC. Now, if you're not very good at Splatoon, and that's completely fine, loads of us aren't, I wouldn't even consider myself that good at Splatoon, and you do struggle with the sort of single player missions in Splatoon, then this DLC might be a little bit frustrating. Some parts of it can be really hard and it will sort of force you to do some of the harder challenges, but I will say, I've personally found Side Order easier than some of the things we got in the main story mode. I found myself dying a lot less as well once I looked up some simple tips and tricks online. So I wouldn't say it's too hard honestly, at least not to the point where it's so difficult you just find yourself losing all enjoyment. And in terms of the money that you have to spend on this, I feel like you definitely do get a lot for your buck. After all, you will get both DLCs, so you'll get the other Inkopolis 2, which is neat, but just the fact that you get a mode which is replayable and you can continue to keep going again and again with it if you would like to and still discover new things like new challenges, new enemies and rewards, then I think that is really worth it. In fact, I would say that's almost more worth it than the Octo Expansion from Splatoon 2, despite the fact that overall I feel like that DLC, especially story-wise, was maybe a little bit stronger. Speaking of the story, there is a lot of lore for you to get here. If you love Pearl and Marina, then you absolutely have to buy this DLC, but if you don't really care about them, then the lore might not interest you that much in my opinion. At least, I don't think it's as strong as it was back in Splatoon 2's DLC. However, since I am a big fan of Pearl and Marina, there are a lot of really interesting tidbits here that give more insights into their relationship, so I feel like that does make it worth it too, if you're a lore fan. So yeah, my take overall is the DLC is definitely worth it. There are some points to consider here that may put you off, but overall, I would say it's worth buying, especially if you've already been thinking about it. I'm really enjoying it so far, and I plan to continue to do so for quite some time. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below if you have purchased it, and let me know if you're still on the fence. If you made it to the end, be sure to comment Splat Gang so I know you did. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing and turning on notifications for more.